<laughs> we'll get we that later. Yeah. Hey. Welcome to Podcastville, cocksuckers. The church is brought to you by Me Undies. Me Undies makes you feel good. Undies, your butt will be proud to wear. Me Undies, the best underwear you could get. Why? Because they're soft. They're made with Modal. And when you sweat and stuff, they keep everything nice and cool. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to get you 20% off the best and softest underwear and socks you will ever own with free shipping and 100% money back guarantee. That's MeUndies.com slash Joey. MeUndies.com slash Joey. Listen, the holidays are coming. You want to look good? You want to go to grandma's with nice clean underwear on? Go to MeUndies.com right now slash Joey and get 20% off. This podcast is also brought to you by, you ready for this one? The best blue apron. Choose from a variety of new recipes each week or let Blue Apron's culinary team surprise you. Recipes are not repeated within a year. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country, period. Do you follow me? Period. Why? Because cooking together builds strong family bonds. Research shows that Blue Apron families cook nearly three times often. This month's menus, listen to this. A seared chicken, a beautiful shrimp pesto fettuccine, and black bean and cheese tortoise. Oh, fuck. You want to eat those? This is how you do it. Check out the menu. Go to me on the uh, Blue Apron. Go to blueapron.com slash Joey. I'm going to get you $30 off your first meal with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash Joey. You're going to feel good because it tastes good. It's delicious. And the best thing is, you get to cook in front of your family like a chef of the future. Go to blueapron.com right now. Kick that mule, Lee. I'm taking you deep in the murky waters with Sabbath because it's that time of the week. When it comes to Sabbath, this is one of my favorite fucking songs of all time. Off for of the Sabotage album. The second album I bought from Black Sabbath on the walk home on Burger Line Avenue. Kick this mule, Lee. We ain't got time to fuck around. The Oban is here tonight. Getting me a what? That's the way to kick off a fucking Monday morning, bitches. Who the fuck is going to stop you? Welcome to the church of what's happening now. My little brother, Theo Vaughn, and my fucking favorite Christ killer of all time, Lee Syad on the fucking drums. I hope you had a great fucking weekend. It's fourth down, two yards. You're ready to fucking score. No more fucking around the rest of the year. Theo Vaughn, I had to blow a fucking smoke cloud. Out of respect, out of your sobriety. I appreciate that, man. You it's great grown. to be look here. Look at you. You made the move. You're fucking a new man. You look good. I'm your an adult. Your material's on fire. My dick is fresh, you're bro. You're killing these fucking people, and you still got no broad on the side. Nuh-uh. You don't want no broad. You're on a fucking mission from Lucifer. 
Mm-mm. Not like our friend over here. He don't give a fuck. He's got a girlfriend. He wants to. <laughs> Say yeah. He's, he's ready to go in the dungeon. Oh, he's two months from owning a George Foreman grill. And oh fucking... no, no, he's all done. He's all done. Oh, he's, he's done. Box. He went to the Bug Festival this weekend. <laughs> Oh, did it you never really? Ends. It never ends. It's not a festival. It's it's a it's a fundraiser for a rescue. But you get yeah. any autographs or what? No, he put his they put Halloween costumes. Oh, on. I did not put a Halloween costume on. Oh you know man, you see, I gotta live with. Yeah, I try. He's it's like being a straight brother. gay guy, bro. He's my little brother. I gotta accept him. What am I gonna do? You know what I'm saying? Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> He's a beautiful animal. One of my 70 favorite people right there, Lee Syed. The top 70 people in People Magazine? That's yeah. your favorite? Lee Syed's a bad motherfucker. <laughs> One of my favorite 70 people, dead or alive, dude. I, I don't think I know 70 people. Yeah, you well, do. Yeah. Every fucking body who dies, they always make 250 mass cards for you. Did you know that? Did they really? Yeah, because everybody on the average knows 250 fucking people. That's why in business you have to be nice to everybody. Because wow. Because everybody knows 250 people. Hmm. At least, not Twitter, not Facebook. Right, you're in, you've been in contact with 250 people. If you die by the age of 50, between classmates, high school mates, college mates, people at your job over 25, 30 fucking years, that's the average. Wow, a lot of people don't know that. You learn that when you buy telemarketing in the 70s. That book helped me in more ways than one. <laughs> Telemarketing in the 70s. If you want to sell, you got that's what you fucking sell. Yeah, you're selling generations. So let's say you sell fucking uh, vacuums and you're serious about mm-hmm. it. What you hope is that Lee is, becomes your goomba, and Lee's son buys your vacuums. Lee's daughter buys mm-hmm. your vacuums. Lee's wife, you know, is his oh, you sister. want fifth generation on yeah, them cubes. That's yeah. what you do. That's what a good fucking salesman does. You know, yeah. it's so weird. You're at the christening. You're doing everything. You're Very, in the back. Yeah, well, you, dude. I'll tell you this. My sister used to be a exotic dancer. Right? She used to be in the fucking where. Uh, Louisiana, kind of certain areas, That's you know. That's a tough living. Yeah, it's a tough area, especially out there. And I, she actually learned to dance, and I remember this is wild, but she learned to dance in a, like a, it was like a trailer, right? Like a, it was like a, you know, exotic place, but it was a trailer, but the stage wasn't very high, and the, the stage was too high in the trailer. So this, the dancers had to crouch and strip at the, and dance at the same time, dude. So if you were over like five four, you had to like duck and look sexy, and that's hard to do, man. Think about that. I've never had to think about that because I'd be fine in that trailer. Oh yeah, you'd be good, bro. Oh, you'd be the fucking, you'd be the dessert dancer, bro. They bring you out with the fucking with the creme brulee, man. Shit. <laughs> The fucking Lee would take the stage like a fucking Thanksgiving Dog, treat. You know, how many how many cream brulees do you think Lee would dance sell? Oh. If that motherfucker came out every hour on the hour. At least eight. At least eight, eight. an hour. I would sell eight every 15 minutes. But like, there's only so many people in the building. Yeah, this is a very small club. Now, let me ask you this. Yeah, but if how they're coming to this club and <laughs> to see me, they like dessert. How long was your sister <laughs> exotic dancing for? She was probably out there for, I guess, about eight years. Were you mad at eight, eight years in the trailer? Oh no, she just started there. She then she went into uh, buildings that were zoned correctly and everything. You know, so they, she, she, she like could that. stretch out. You know, did you get mad at all those years? Were you upset with her? Let me think, man. We weren't really close growing up. I mean, I always I actually you know older what? than you or younger than you, younger than me. Okay, yeah. So you were upset. I mean, I was. Uh, well, the crazy part was honestly, we look alike. So I would see dudes sometimes looking at me like weirdly, like around at, when I was out at lunch and shit, you know. And they she were like, a, "Do she I has know a you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she got a fucking goatee, dude. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> but uh, but so I guess that if we wouldn't have looked alike, it might have it might have not been so wild to me. But you know what, dude? She didn't have, you know, she was missing some elements growing up and. You know, I, I respect the, I respect any women if they're out there in those type of environments because it's a hard environment, and that you know, because otherwise, if you're not doing that, what what are you doing then? You know, if you're at that invi- if you're at that doorstep where you are, you know, where you're looking for an occupation, but you're if you're not doing that, you're probably up to some dark art. You know. Sorry about that. <laughs> what the, the fuck, fuck bro? Out. I hear music. That's a weird you fucking, yeah. That's Thank Joey's ringtone? It's like Elvis for the holidays, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my you want some fucking Memphis email list, bro? I don't fucking know. What kind of, did you go to that strip club in, in the trailer? 
I mean, I'd been, I mean, I'd been over there before, but I didn't, you know, I, I wouldn't go there with my sister. Well, no, I, I would hope not, but I can't even imagine. Like, is it just like a, like a construction trailer that they just put a little stage in and a couple folding chairs? I mean, I don't think that they had, you know, a long. I don't know if they're what their long term business model was. You know, <laughs> I mean, I'll say that, but they, you know, it was good. It was a small town place, you know, and people were enjoying themselves and. uh but yeah, I mean, I'll, I mean, I love my sister. She's the best, you know. I mean, I would. I mean, she's a fucking G, man. She's a fucking G, you know. She's she's real as they get. It's crazy because. But what were we talking about? What were we talking about? Squatting the trailer. But even got into this conversation. No, though. no, it's just weird that did she ever go to a big city and dance, or did she keep it like Shreveport? I mean, I think she, you know, nothing real crazy. I don't think. I mean, we weren't that close at a lot of that time. She married now. No. Still not single. Married. Still single. Ready to um, mingle. Ready to mingle. Cool chick, though. Kids? No kids. Look, she kept it together, man. Yeah. That's, that's what hard. I'm saying. That's how. Listen, you're 22, right? You're 22. You got nothing going on. I mean, what are your fucking options? You're going to go work at a vet? Yeah. Or a daycare for $8 an hour or whatever? As a young girl, I mean, you know, and I have a daughter. How, how would it feel if she came to me and said, look, I'm going to go to fucking college? But I got an answer. I'm going to go strip for five years, for four years. The four years I could have been in college, I'm going to go strip. But you're not that intelligent to grasp it at that time. Right. The girls that go into that, go into that. And I'm not talking on that line here because they were missing something. You yeah. Know, for the first time, somebody paid attention to them. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. She was abused. She had like this, this violent kind of black boyfriend she dated and that abused. And I think that's what got her into it. You well, know. You know, it's just uh you don't give a fuck about yourself, but think about it. With, with, with you, with what you know now, yeah, the knowledge you have now. If you were fucking an eighteen-year-old chick, your tits were hot, you got a nice little ass. All these guys are torturing you all the time. They're fucking broke. You know, I mean, as a woman, you go. You know what? I wasn't raised to do this. Yeah. But it's two thousand fucking seventeen. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go to Subway and be surrounded by stiffs or some sand. You know, dudes jerking off over yeah, there yeah, anyway. Yeah. So they caught the two dudes jerking off by the our Subway. At really? least, yeah. There was something about it. I think it was just. I don't know. It could have been the air freshener or something they used in there. They literally, the subway fucking made you feel it wrecked, bro. I think they had subway. one of those lavender air things in the. And bathroom. I'm not making fun of subway employees. I always no. tell Lee that the fucking my biggest fear is when you walk into Subway, like who I thought I was going to turn out to be, mm -hmm. honest to God. And I didn't want this. You ever go into Subway and everybody's 22, mm -hmm. but then there's one guy that's 50 with a ponytail. That was you? And he's he's got an earring and he's still, he's still cool. Mm -hmm. Like he's still fighting the fucking cool. It yeah. don't matter that he lives in an apartment with eight dudes and Whatever. when he got home the other night, they were listening to Aqualong and it doesn't matter. What matters is that he went to see Guns N' Roses, you know, uh, two weeks ago. Right. And, uh, this is what's going on. And, he's living his life. Yeah, he's living his life, but he didn't really look at the other part of your life. He didn't look at it ladder when life moves fucking fast and you're still talking about some fucking band. Yeah. When everybody else your age is growing up. Is growing the fuck up. You know, it's it's kind of a weird. I was always scared to be that guy. That mm. petrified me, Lee. Well, I, don't, I mean,. Don't you think it would take like a very specific kind of person to be a, be, be like be a stripper and not get affected by it? Because you're talking like, oh, it'd be great. Two out of fucking ten, right? The right. percentages. Two out of ten, if you and make an educated guess. Yeah. I went to a strip club a year ago, nine months ago. I get bored. I, I'm like any other fucking guy. You, you, yeah. I'm home one night. It's ten fifteen. Everybody's fucking sleeping. Yeah. Everybody's asleep in my house at ten fifteen. Like out. Yeah, like, I can't even fucking punch somebody. Yeah, I, I I tried to wake my wife up to give me the tin, the pen, the iTunes, so I could order the fucking phone. She told me to go fuck myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody's out in my fucking house at fucking ten fifteen. Yeah. So I go, let me go to Yum Yum Donuts. And then you're a fat fuck. You just sit at a donut stand waiting for the world. By yourself. Oh, yeah, God. I said, fuck it. And they got a lot of home uh, transdressed up. If there. you stay on Colfax and go up to like Victory and make a left, there's a strip club. And I went in there, and I made an observation. You know, you're just sitting there looking at pussy and tits, and it's phenomenal. <laughs> I'm not going to say that you, you know, I didn't like it or it was dirty. Yeah. First off, the strip club is always empty. Yeah. I mean, you can't believe how empty it is. 
like bone dry, like there's four fucking guys sitting there drinking water because it's new. And you yeah, drink water. Like they're showing, they're showing photos of people that were in there earlier in the day. Yeah, That's how I can. Man, you missed it. There was four <laughs> people in here, and I, you know, you talk to different girls. There was one girl I talked to that her boyfriend comes to comedy shows. She comes with them all the time. Oh wow! And there was another girl that her boyfriend was a fucking fan of the podcast, and oh. and uh, you know the whole, you know, you you have all these girls that are in there that t talk to you. Yeah. And I looked at them, and I'm like, look at that girl. She's 18. There was one girl I was 20. You know, I give her the whole bank account. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you look at her and go, you, you you give her the whole bank account. Like, listen, just come home with me. Go get your clothes. I'm going to throw my Wi-Fi out when we get home. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, sure. And for some dudes, they would do that. And they you would know? do that. And then you have the girls that are 42, man. They're, yeah. they're out there banging it. They're eating grapefruit juice and jumping and yeah, and fucking, uh, <laughs> you know, and you got to give them heart. Like, you sit there and go, well, I know what she's going through. Yeah, I don't want to pick the twenty-year-old because she's going to feel bad. But if I pick the twenty-year-old, right, know, the twenty-year-old will glob all over you and suck your sperm. She doesn't know that there's HIV out there and chlamydia of the mouth and shit. Yeah, she's still well, thinking she could, you know. Well, the forty-year-old gives you hand wipes because she knows you're going to finger her, and she don't want the leftover salt from the pretzel you had two hours earlier. She's a G. Fucking, it's just really weird, bro. When you uh, deal with when they become a professional, yeah. Like, have you ever bumped into a professional stripper? Yeah. What's, what's the yeah, difference? it's a different game. Well, it's the same it's thing. It's a different as, game, brother. It's like staying at comedy for a certain period of time. It's like there's a yeah, certain there's day, a certain day when you're like you realize, oh, oh, I I'm, know what you're doing, uh, or and I'm this in is here. What I'm gonna do. Yeah. And when you deal I'm with a professional. professional stripper, you go in there, dog. She takes you into the first room first. She'll give you a couple whips of her monkey. Yeah, she maybe won't let fucking... you touch it. Da, da, da. And then she'll take you upstairs, bang you out for the small four bills, and that's when she becomes a nun. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck happened? She sold you. Yeah. She ain't a stripper no more. She's a saleswoman now. Yeah. You want to fucking suck? That's 2000 for this fucking piece of ass. Yeah. 2000 You want to look at me? 2000 motherfucker. 2000 they look at you with They're a They're going to squeeze face. you, bro. You know what? You want to smell my asshole and fucking gonna eat fuck, a yogurt at the same time? They're not going to fuck 11 guys no more. That's 3,000. five. They're going to fuck fucking six guys for $1,000. Yeah. And make 12000 a week. Which fucks so $2,000. So I, I've even thought, I've thought about it that. If you pay whatever that is, 2000 500 that's not the whole night. That's like one one round, I oh, guess. Oh, you can negotiate whatever the fuck you want. Okay, thank God. Dude, what about fucking just somebody regular and then tipping them after? Is that crazy, you think? Like, if it's just a girl you met. They get insulted. Yeah. I could see you telling the girl, listen, man, I'm going to go out of town on Thursday. I didn't know this was going to happen. I had a great time. Can you get $200 there? I'm going to leave it there for you for you, for you to do your toes yeah. and your nails and get yourself lunch with your girlfriend, you know? Yeah, that's a way to do it. It's how you fucking do it. You know, it's not making them feel like a fucking hooker. Yeah. But... But, you can't fuck, yeah. You know, it's like right now, Harvey Weinstein's getting in trouble for all this shit. And, and yeah, he's a pig. But you got to admit, there's a, there's a thousand guys out there. I used to date a girl, bro, that was a stripper. Mm -hmm. And after a, a year or two, I accepted what she did. And I used to just talk to her sometimes. And by talking to her, it really showed me how pathetic men were. Mm -hmm. Because not even in my deepest, darkest moment would I do something like that. Yeah. You know, yeah, I like fucking getting your dick sucked. Everybody does. Everybody likes to bump into somebody and let they eat your monkey. And yeah. Have a good time. Fucking especially leak out on somebody's car seat. Especially as a comedian. But to walk into a strip club right out, and this is what they do every week. This yeah. is their freak. This is, and I tell people all the time that you're married, so you have these boundaries. Yeah. And then you present yourself with personal boundaries. And you go, you know what? I got a wife. I got a kid. I got a daughter. I got to go home now. Four fucking hours. My wife don't bang me like she used to. She don't let me come in her hair no more. All those days are done. Yeah. And even with women. When women go to a gym, maybe your wife will go to a gym not to fuck somebody, but just to somebody to tell her she looks good. Yeah. Everybody has their own needs, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I respect. Look, man. I mean, and also you see, look. Joe, you see these billboards now. You see these sugar model billboards. You see this shit all over? No. Sugar models, right? And it's like escorts, basically. It's like high-end escorts out here in L.A. you can get, you know? Where it's like, it's, But it's not set up like escorts. It's like, oh, $400, you go to dinner with this girl. Right. Or $200, you guys go to dinner. And everything else is kind of whatever you do is your business, right? But it's kind of known that, you know, sex is an option. You know, it's on the table for, you know, both sides of the party.
So part of me sometimes I'm like, well, is and I I don't even think I don't think prostitution is a bad business. You know, I don't think that it should be. I don't know if if I feel like it should be illegal or not. You know, but I think it's weird that women aren't protesting having these billboards up because I feel like that endangers a lot of women. You know, it does. But let me tell you something. I don't know. How long have you been here? Ten years. Yeah, ten years. In your ten years, have you ever, and I'm not saying it correctly, a lot of people are going to get mad at me. In your ten years, have you met a kept woman? And you know what a oh, kept yeah, woman yeah, is? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A kept woman is? Yes. Lee Syatt makes $2 million a year. He yeah. loves Paula. He's been with Paula. He doesn't want to fucking do nothing wrong. But DeAndra. But what he does is he's <laughs> got an apartment across the street. He's got an apartment right across the street right here. Lee Syatt will pay her twelve hundred dollar a month rent. Put three of his fingers in her ass. Put once five, a week. Five hundred dollar car payment for a fucking lease Audi through your company. Yeah, because your wife don't look at your books, and you give her fifteen hundred a month to live. That's that's three that thirty five hundred out of your. That's oh forty thousand, but you're making thirty million a year, Lee. Yeah, that's okay. nothing. So, Lee, how many? And we've had this discussion, and and, and you know it because you live in L. A. Like, when I went to acting class, that's when I started meeting those girls. Yeah. Like, I went to a girl's house that was fucking neighbors with Shaq. Yeah. Like, you went to the penthouse, the elevator opened, Shaq's door was there, and her door was there. Yeah. That sounds like a lot more than 1200 a month, right? Well, yeah, because her pussy was worth, you know. <laughs> that's a girl that when you come over, she bathes you, she yeah. cuts your toenails, she rubs cream all over you. And then she goes to fucking town. Yeah. You come home, you leave there on Saturday morning feeling like a king again because your wife forgot how to treat you and people around you forgot how to treat you. So you don't mind going to your extra buck. You ever see that in episode, episode of Narcos when they talk about Barry Seal, the pilot, and when they found him at a hooker house and they go, Barry Seal was from the South. Oh, yeah, from Baton Rouge. Tom Cruise is playing him in that movie yes, right now. Yes, okay. They go, Barry Seal was from the South. He loved pussy college football and hallucinations hallucinogenic mind altering drugs yeah that made him a perfect CIA agent and they show him in bed with five fucking tens five that's a fifty bro what does that cost you Lee what do you think that cost you to go into a hooker house and go I want the five baddest bitches I don't want them to be dented I don't want them to have kids mm, no moles either no moles they got a guy in the back them. cutting moles off these I want them to bitches. be five playmates yeah. For the whole night to suck and fuck till blood comes out of their nose. That's 10 G's a pop. You got to go in there and drop 50 and go, I want the more. Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, we, when we had Dennis Hoff on, he told us what the guy spent $6 million or something crazy yeah, yeah. between Thanksgiving and Christmas yeah. and New Year's or something. Yeah. Jesus. So there's a bunch of kept women in Hollywood. And I'll tell you why. They come out here, bro. They end up in a roommate situation up in the fucking valley. They gotta take they, they, a month after they get here, the car blows up. Yeah, they're taking buses all around, but they really like Hollywood and they're starting to make. And one day they go into a fucking acting class and they meet some forty year old that yep. just wants to get into acting, but he don't want to get into acting. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's looking for fucking little guppies. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Well, I'm struggling. I'm a waitress three days a week, and I host this six nights a week, and I really have no time to audition. Let me take care of that. Yeah. You got a boyfriend? Yeah, but he's an asshole. He doesn't call me. Listen, I know you're fucking and sucking. Don't disrespect me. But what if I come over once a week, I get your new fucking apartment, Belly Hill, brand new fucking get car. Get some new shoes, get some kids, new shoes, some, some fucking whatever. Listen, man, how many women will go, what, what's, what? You know, Harvey, for, for all the women that turn Harvey Weinstein down and are fucking uh, saying all this shit about him, there had to be 50 of them. That he stocked up. Oh, and there, I bet there were. That he I was bet there were yeah. three hundred of them. Three hundred that also offered to him, and that he's probably said no. It's crazy. This works both ways, especially in a town like this, where you have high rents, people struggle here. That are young actors, they have a dream. Listen, you can still have a dream. Yeah. Just yeah, I used to go to the freaking uh, parlor. I used to go to the parlor comedy show. Jay Davis had the show right at the parlor. It was really big. For a long time, and Jay's a great guy, and he puts on great shows. And we go over there, dude. There was probably three or four women that I met in there, who were kept women, who had nice houses around there. Never could explain what they did. Always on jets, doing this and that. What the fuck, you know? Oh, so they didn't tell you this. And but then, but then they later, I would hear from their friends. Oh, she's you know she's uh, got a boyfriend, you know. 
but he comes in once a month or something like yeah, that. He's a sixty year old the, guy from Texas. This is a girl I saw last night that I used to bang a little bit and you know do things and everything with each other's bodies. And she said, uh, she said, oh, she got this guy. She says it's her godfather. She always frames him as you oh, know. That's, that's even gross. That's but even I worse. just, well, it's not really though. But I just realized the other day, that's what the fuck's going on. I could There was always an element missing as to where this girl made any money, how she was living lavish in the hill. And she always had this godfather, you know, and it didn't make any sense. And then finally the other day, I realized, oh, that's the, this the guy. There's no godfather, you know. This is the bank account. You know, that's the guy. Remember in fucking Pretty Women when uh, he says something? She goes, what are you telling him? I told him he's my uncle. Yeah. And he goes, don't worry about it. a lot of uncles come in here. And I can just see it. It just makes sense. That's gross. It's but I told you, Leo, a long time member. ago. I told you, not not a real family I know, but to even equate it with that with the word. Yeah, that's right. my uncle. Ugh. That's my uncle. You gotta say step you uncle. Yeah, just think like this is my this is my boss or something. Yeah. Hey, can you let me ask you this, man? When I was when I was fucking twenty, when I was nineteen, Ugh. I'll never forget walking around in the summertime in Aspen. Never forget this. Even my, maybe because at that time I was such a fucking whore. But I'll never forget 1980 fucking three in Aspen, Aspen, Colorado, walking around that summer, eating like a sandwich outside one day oh, on yeah. a park bench and going, you know, if I was 21 and I was blonde and I was hot, I mean spanking hot, and I had class, like I knew what a fork was and I knew, <laughs> yeah. Like, I knew different, like, genders would, of shrimp. I would come up here, man, and fucking from November to April, walk out of here with 10 Gs a week. Because yeah. I, I know Texans, when I used to work at the Crestwood Hotel, Texans would come in, bro. And, and you believe me or not, they would come in with their families. Lee, you, your wife, and three fucking kids, three little fucking morons. And the first thing you do is you go up to the fucking center. Like most people, like me, you, and uh, whatever his fucking name is, Theo would go, hey, man, I need new skis. Hey, man, I need a new jacket. We get in our car and go to Glenwood Springs. Yeah. Because that's the mall. Right. And everything is cheap down there. Only idiots would buy shit. Like when you go to Snowmass Village right. to ski Aspen, only you're a moron. It's just somebody that drove it up if there you buy and raised shit. it up 100%. Yeah, it's like fucking you're paying out the ass. But let me tell you something. Guy, money, oil guys from Texas would come. You'd get them in. You'd drive them. You'd pick them up at the airport, drive them. they give you 100 bucks at the door. And then they go, hold on. We're going to check in our stuff, and we're going to come right back. We need to ride up to Sport Kalen. They did this every year, bro. You gave them a ride to Sport Kalen. You waited the guy would give his fucking wife a fucking black, whatever, the highest yeah. American Express card. He would go into a bar and take you in there with him. What, what do you mean you ain't going to have a drink? In those days, I used to drink, guys, because <laughs> Texans come up there. Yeah. And we would go into like a fucking John Denver's bar, the tower, and have a drink while his wife was across the way at Sport Canada. And then he'd have two, he, to my drink, he'd have five. Mm. And then he'd go over, I'd go back to the van, he'd go over and spend, I mean, from socks, the, the salesmen, they're fucking the best. They sell you everything. Yeah. And these Texans would come in and go, give me the best of the best. Yeah. You know. You know I want it all. I want $2,000 $2, goggles. Of, yeah. $40,000, Lee, in fucking equipment. You drive it back or they, they fix it for you. They come back up to ski. They pick it up. They do that for four fucking days. The kids are the only ones that really ski because mom and dad are in their fucking 50s. And they're they drinking. Tired. Guess what happens when they leave? Leave the shit. They leave the shit. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. We're talking fucking... We're talking skis made out of bone. Human bone. $40,000. Slave femurs, bro. Don't fucking tell me. They were... Those bellmen... The reason why those people work at that hotel... Like, when I was working there in 1983... When I was working at the Crestwood in 1984... 60% of the people in that hotel lived off of the tips in the winter... And fucking what people left in their rooms. Yeah. Theo Vaughn goes to, hits a fucking HBO special and has a TV show. What kind of party do you think Theo Vaughn's going in there? Theo Vaughn's going to pay 20, Kate Quigley 20000 to light herself on fire. Kate, yeah. here's 20000 Just light your pussy hairs on fire. You're oh, like, I'm going to be eating black yeah, cats out like, of her asshole. Yeah, you're like you the know? premiere of the show. Yeah. Kate Quigley lights a pussy hairs on fire. We tape it. You know what he's going to drop up there? He's going to buy shirts. 
his shit, and he's going to buy 20 bottles of fucking the best vodka. What he doesn't drink stays in the room. What do you do, Lee? You're making eight bucks an hour. You walk into a room, and there's three bottles of Dom Perignon and six bottles of tequila that unopened. That's how you made your money in those days. Do you know how many fucking ski boots and skis I got given to me at that hotel? And I would give them to people? Like, yeah. I would give them away. Like, bro, what size boots you wear? Eight. Here you go. Joey, these are six hundred. These are $600 boots. Yeah. Some yeah. guy bought them. Wear them to church, you know? <laughs> they did that every fucking yeah. week. So, wait. Did, and did these people come, leave it, and come back next year and do it do again? Do it again. Do it again. Oh, no. So, what are they going to do? Bring it home? No. What are they going to do, Lee? It's okay. oil, Lee. It's dead dinosaur sauce. Uh, b- rent an apartment there and and, and leave the skis have, in there. Lee, they ain't got time for that. You know oh, what, Lee? Jesus fucking Christ. Because that time, Buy right, they're making money. The the Lee, you think they're going to fucking leave in the airport and drop the shit yeah, off at a, at a, fucking, a fucking storage a unit? A Texan, Lee. No, they don't give a, buy a house. They don't give a fuck. Lee, I used to laugh, laugh at those taxes. I remember one guy opening up a briefcase one day in front of me. Oh. A Texan came in and he wanted money or something put away like a jewelry in his safe he gave lady the jewelry but in his briefcase Mm -hmm. he had stacks like a drug deal he wasn't no fucking drug deal he's a white dude that owned like a fucking meat company yeah but when he came to colorado he came meats to colorado because he knew he was going to aspen four nights he was going to buy blow you know how many times people walked into rooms in aspen and bumped into a, a quarter ounce of blow or an eight bowl, but you know how many fucking wait made just to come up to me and go, Psst, come here, look, give me like a gram and a half of coke that they found in the room. People yeah. don't want to take that shit back. Mm-mm. Especially in New York, you can usually hit up a, uh, somebody that's cleaning the rooms or whatever and ask them. Tell them when you get there. We used to do that. Do we get there? Tell them we get there. You find anything good? You know, here's 40 bucks. Drop it off by my room. It really is. <laughs> no it questions really, asked. It really is crazy when you see the amount of money some people have. You well, never even, know. Lee. Even at that age, like when I lived up there, I was like, I, if, if I was a hot girl, 21, nobody knew me. I came out here from Jersey, kept it light, bro. Yeah. Real light, you know. Put an ad where it mattered. Chill. Lived down Valley. Got myself an Uber up Valley. Just Fuck. a soft signal. Wear a jingle yeah. bell around your fucking Make believe you ankle. Carry a piece in your purse. Make believe a bodyguard dropped you off. Yeah. And after a while on Aspen, listen to me, bro. As a young girl, if you're getting a nickel a fucking nut job and you're getting two nut jobs a night, three nights a week. Well, if you're doing two nut jobs a week, it's $1,000 a week. Of the, and some of those Texans will come up and say, you know what, little girl? How about I just give you $10,000 and you just stay and polish this knob <laughs> yeah. for three days? You get $10,000. Go fuck my son. Here's 2500 Go fuck my son. You go home, you disconnect the fucking service, and then you come back three months yeah. later with different color hair. They're slick. Those chicks are slick, bro. Those chicks and they're are masters because after a while, they're just they, work. They're yeah. employed. They're just business women. They learn how to become a bit. At first, it's, look, when you go into a strip club, and you see the girls with the honcho, the, the, the local drug dealer? Yeah. Like, last night there was a shooting at a, at a club in, like, I don't know, some bum little fucking town. We used to do comedy here in California. I may not insult nobody. Yeah. But it's true. Those little fucking homie towns where they have that one club deluxe and the neighborhood drug dealer's VIP. And when he comes in, a little oh, girl yeah. crazy. And they don't know that this guy's a scab off of fucking society's ass. He's not even nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least if he was the real kingpin. He'd, he'd be, be in New York, York or yeah, he'd he's be just jet got, setting and yeah. shit. He's got Meanwhile, fucking four grams in his fucking right. glove box. Yeah, but he's fucking King Slade or Spunk whatever. Spunk or something. He's got Spunk tattooed across his fucking chest. Yeah, he like don't even know like that, that. His, that, his, that his gang name is also a name for semen or something. You he's know? just so fucking cool and he walks in and, and those little clubs like that. It's so weird out. And they love him. You know, when you walk into like a, a strip club, you know the girls that are, they bought into it. Like there's certain girls that oh yeah bought into it, and then there's certain girls that are fucking professional. Yeah, like even at that club where I went to, they got a bunch of knuckleheads. But there's a girl that when you see her walk in there, she usually strolls in. She's a G. She's got a clipboard. She she works shit. It's yeah. a work job, and yeah, she'll let you fucking stick four fingers up a knuckle her asshole. But I'll tell you what, <clears throat> you're gonna leave there with your pocket sucked out. Yeah, you're gonna leave there and go, man, she was hot, but. I did what? For how much? What Dude. am I, a fucking idiot? That yeah. means they got a talent, Jack. 
That's the talent. I don't ever talent. judge a woman for that. I can't. I can't. Well, I we're did. doing the same shit, man. We're, we're doing, doing with our emotions, shit. though. And I did the same shit as a criminal. Dude, if I had a nice asshole, I'd show it to people every night for Thank a couple of fucking more. grand. How many people, how many times have you heard somebody, there's a couple people Ari hangs out with that they, there's a broad Ari hangs out with, not date like love-wise, but they're friends. She sells her underwears, her socks. She makes a living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of selling her bras, her underwear. I mean, <clears throat> somebody takes her bra and snips her fucking bra. Some dude, bro, or even a woman or a kid. It's, it's, I don't, I don't, you cannot get mad at a woman for doing that. I yeah. can't. Dude, I used to have this dude in, our, in college named Gnome, right? Everybody called him Gnome, this dude. Oh, dude. He was like little, but he wasn't like a little person, you know? He was just outside of that, you know? <laughs> it was like a fucking. He just barely did he made he barely made it. Just rocking that cusp, you know? Five foot like one he and could a have half. been a lifeguard at like a midget only pool, you know? Like he was just but also where you had to also be little to work at the place. So like he was just like above and he uh anytime he'd hook up with a chick, he would wear their underwear around his neck. It was like his thing, right? And he'd do that all summer. By the end of summer, this dude would be running around looking like a fucking, like he just robbed a bank in the Wild West. He'd have like nine pairs of fucking women's underwear around his neck, you know? What, what, he, he wouldn't take them off? Not for the summer. Now, in the winter, he was fresh. You could see his neck. He was natural in the winter. But fucking Joey's ordering pizzas over here. Joey's fucking customizing a lasagna here on his new app he got. <laughs> But, it's dude, I didn't get to this story, so what happened was... Sorry, I'm very sorry to interrupt. Just a buddy of mine I want to know when I was landing in Omaha, and I kept on... He's been bugging me. Yeah, for not this. tonight, bro. No, you know? I know. <laughs> but he told me this week. I know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You see how I live? And then I have friends that don't stop. About a week ago, I have this dear friend. Uh-huh. Dear friend. I'm talking when I'm in the seventh grade, we play basketball. I hung out with him and his brother. Yeah. Dear friend. He calls me. And I go, hey, man, I, but you remind me, do me a favor. Your son does something with web pages, with YouTube pages. Like, that's what he does. Yeah. Him and his partner will take your YouTube page, and next thing you know, you're making $3. Next thing you know, you're making $300,000 with these two kids. You can see it. That's what they do. Right. I said, tell your son to give me a call. I'm going to hook him up with Lee. Maybe he can help us out. Yeah, no worries. This happened at 9 in the morning. You know, at 12 o'clock, I go to jujitsu, and that's when the phone starts ringing. I could sit there with uh, two ten fingers up my ass waiting for people to call me. As soon as I get out of jujitsu, I look when they call. Everybody starts calling at 11.57. <laughs> I have nine missed calls from 11.57 on. Sure enough, I get a call from his son. And then I look, and 30 minutes later, the father calls me. Yeah. Do you know that motherfucker called me every 45 minutes Jeez. on the dot the rest of the day until mm. about 7? I just wouldn't even fucking answer the phone because I knew if I answered the, the phone, I was going to go the fuck off. Oh, I see what you're saying. So then he stopped at some point. Like maybe <laughs> like at, at 2 in the morning, he stopped, L.A. time. Like Jesus. at 2 in the morning, New Jersey time. I get up the next morning, and who the fuck do you think fucking calls me at 9.01? And I was, I'd forgotten all about the day before. Yeah. Like, I was involved in my day, and I looked at the phone, and I just slung, and I go, hey, do me a favor. You call me one fucking time. This is a business phone. Don't ever fucking call me once in one fucking day. And I just hung up on him, and I haven't heard from him since. Yeah. Because no, they, they don't get it. They, they, if you call me between 7.30 and 9 a.m., what the fuck do you think I'm doing, Theo? I may be on Twitter, but my four-and-a-half-year-old is on the floor over there painting, asking me fucking questions. Yeah. So if I pick up the phone, you're not going to like the conversation you're about to fucking hear. Yeah. So I don't pick up the phone. Out of respect, out of my peoples. Out of respect, out of my peeps, I don't pick up the fucking phone. Yeah. Because she's right there. And if not, I'm with her on the couch watching fucking whatever. I dare you to come to my house and answer the phone on the couch when my daughter's sitting next to you. I dare you. Yeah. <laughs> I dare you. You have no idea what decency is. She will look at you. <laughs> you ever see the look De Niro gives Val Kilmer? <laughs> the look that Val Kilmer gives that retard and he's at the cute, diner? Man. You you fuck around in my house, sit on the couch while she's watching cartoons. 
and I dare your phone to ring. <laughs> and God forbid your ring is on, okay? If your ringer is on, she will give you a fucking look. <laughs> like, are you fucking retarded? Turn that shit off. The other day I was at Denny's sitting next to her, and she was playing with her fucking Barbie doll Fuck Denny's, with man. two little shoes on, and the shoes kept falling off. I go, Mercy, <laughs> do me a favor. Give me the fucking shoes. We, get to, we walk into Denny's, and sure enough, Daddy, her shoe <laughs> fell off. I knew the fucking shoe was going to fall off. I fucking knew it. It's been falling off all fucking morning. <laughs> so I go, sit off over here and don't move. So I go outside, there's the shoe in the middle of the fucking driveway, a car drove over it, <laughs> poor Barbie shoes all fucked up, now I gotta bring it in to sell it to her, I gotta put it back on the foot, the shoe was so fucked up, Barbie was limping, <laughs> so we're sitting there minding our own business, and who walks in out of all the seats, now the, the fucking place is empty, they got me waiting there because my wife went back to the fucking car, to the house, because she forgot that if she locked the door. CeeLo? Who walked in? CeeLo? No, 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 no. No CeeLo. I would If oh, CeeLo I walked... I... If I walked in... that And that fucking Denny's, I saw... Were you with me when we saw... What's his name in there? I don't think so. Yeah, you were with me when we saw... Who was it? They got the braids? Home, home Improvement. Oh, Tim he, Allen? He goes there all the time. Wow. That's a That's a swing in Denny's over there. Yeah. I just don't go in there at night, because that's... You're born to get shot. You know what happened now. When you go to a Denny's, you might as well go to a Vegas to a country bro, concert. Bro, look. When you go to Denny's after 10 nowadays, you might as well sign up yeah. for the next country fucking concert yeah. and fucking whatever. Stand real close to the window and wave this time. Dude, this is uh, this, uh, <laughs> Bro, I used to do this bit about Denny's and how much I hated Denny's, right? Um, it's on your special. It's on my special, right? So anyway, I was like, I wish somebody would shoot up a fucking Denny's, right? That's what I would say. Dude, some kid puts in the comments, he goes, man, he puts a, cl a, cl a link to a YouTube clip. He goes, man, my dad actually got shot up at a fucking Denny's. He goes, somebody walked in with a gun and shot everybody in the place. One star. He goes... But I still love this bit that you do. And that was beautiful, bro. Here I am joking about it. He said it really happened. He lost his father right next to a fucking grill, bro. Right next to a griddle. You know what? You got, you know, two brothers back there fucking sword fighting with spatulas. I probably hopped up on fucking methamphetamines, you know? Not knowing they're going to lose their job to the fucking Mexican guy sitting at the bar, you know? Unbelievable, man. But that's God, dude. That kid came and he was just positive, man. There's a couple places where I go late night and I'm like, like one night me, Lee, and Becky went to Denny's on a fucking, on a, on a fucking Sunday night after a podcast. And we were having a good time, but the whole time I was like squatting under the bush by that window because <laughs> yeah. the window is on Burbank Boulevard yeah. I want to be a crip alright shoot up at Denny's I'm sitting there having fucking a salad <laughs> yeah. and something with my friend here and all of a sudden and Becky's sitting counterclockwise so she gets it right in the head we gotta bury Becky with a hat on with a, with a ten planet fucking <laughs> <laughs> with a chef hat on I like Josh Wolf you know what I'm saying <laughs> why do you think that, that shouldn't be in my brain I'm scared of anything already I'm scared of everything well you would look good in a chef you hat you don't think I'm fucking scared you see me how many nights we leave here dying of hunger you and I one in the morning sometimes me and him he's cross-eyed yeah this guy if I t at two in the morning if I go and lean listen I got a, sand a sandwich coming over here just jiggle my balls I guarantee <laughs> I'll confuse him for 10 minutes he'll be sitting there confused I don't know I got this jiggle his balls I washed my hands I've done worse I got a hand job from a Chinese shake one yeah, time dude. <laughs> Dude, I remember this dude used to fucking. <laughs> so who gives a fuck, really? Oh my god! Oh my god! This fart is tremendous. This is the. Bro, they had a guy used to tell us for right. He'd give you thirty bucks just to tell you he'd been jerking off. This older dude. What? I remember when I was young. He used to say that. I'd be like, "Look, I'm gonna tell you something. All right." And he'd be like, "All right." And he'd say, "I've been jerking off." Give me thirty bucks. No, and then he would give us thirty bucks to keep quiet. Because we were, we were children, but he wasn't supposed to be saying it to us. Oh, he he paid you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not paying him for him to tell me that shit, dude. I don't give a fuck. I assumed that when I met him. Oh, my God. But here was the thing, though. I never even got to this, dude, was that... So, my sister, one time, we lived together for a while, right? And this is probably about eight years ago. She had, they had this other dancer that worked with her, came over to our place, right? <laughs> Stole our vacuum, right? <laughs> 
she was on these Klonopins and everything, and then she got all fucking, you know, warm under the skin one night on them pills and fucking stole our vacuum, you know? Dude, a- as you do. I wasn't there when she stole it, but literally I could picture her probably trying to put it in her fucking purse, you know? Like the stick end in the purse and the fucking huge vacuum hanging out, right? Oh. Dude, fast forward. Year and a half, right? I'm not even living with my sister anymore. I'm in New Orleans for a bachelorette party or somewhere, a Baton Rouge somewhere, or a, ba- a bachelor party. They got a big fucking money deal, right? They wheel in one of those cakes where the women pop out, like the fake cake, and they pop out and they dance, right? You know, one of the chicks that pops out is the fucking bitch that stole my vacuum, bro, right? So everybody else, I have no idea. I totally forgot about this. Like, fuck you, bitch. Oh, everybody else is tipping these bitches and fucking, sh- you know, shaking both of their ass cheeks at the same time, you know, with each hand, you know, like they're, you know, like doing a really fast. Both for me. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like both for me with both hands. <laughs> yeah, both for me. And here I am in the background and all I can think is that bitch stole, stole my, my fucking, fucking vacuum. vacuum, dude. Bro, I had half of a nerve to just the whole time just make vacuum sounds in the back, just like. What I was you, so pissed, bro. What'd she do when she saw you? Huh? What did she do when she? She saw- acted like she didn't know, and that's the thing I don't like about people. I guess that steal vacuums is when they see you, they act like you don't fucking remember. Like I'm not gonna remember you stole a vacuum from. I wasn't on Klonopins. I wasn't on Somas. You know? How do you even get? How do you get away with a vacuum? Like, do, doesn't someone, if they, rec- if, if if I was in an apartment building and I saw someone who was on, like, Kalana pins with a vacuum just running down the stairs, <laughs> bless you. Oh, well, it's half of America. It's half of the neighborhood around here probably is on Kalana What can they give you for a fucking vacuum? I mean, if you came over my house with a vacuum, what can I give you? The, the small 15? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say at least 30. That's like a snow. I, I don't know. If, what if it goes kaputs? After they go down the block, I'm no fucking vacuum mechanic, <laughs> but I know there's a little fucking belt in there, and whenever that when you hit something fucked up, the belt breaks. Like I used to have a Kirby vacuum, and they come with a package as a belt. I couldn't do it. Like whenever the vacuum broke, my mom had to take it off and put the vacuum on. Yeah, and you got to be like a fucking technician. You got to unplug it, or the vacuum will suck your fingers in. <laughs> so, so nice to you. What, what kind you of fucking got a great what vacuum? Kind of fucking Cuban can't fix a vacuum. That's what I want. My know. mom, my mom could take the thing. We had a Kirby. When we were when I was a kid, they had like the shitty vacuums you could buy. Yeah. But my mom was such a fucking spec. She was such a fucking neurotic Cuban that she loved she she bought a vacuum. Like let's say a back vacuum in those days, like a top notch vacuum cost fourteen ninety five in those yeah. days. Like in the set well I'm lying to you, it was seventy three. Once we moved back to uh, click on Kirby nice fucking one too. vacuum. One little kick on Kirby vacuums. One you could one of the suck your cat's dick from across the room. Something dude. got up nice my I still remember being a kid and, and the guy coming over to the house. And my mom and her girlfriend and like a buddy were over there and I'm like, what's going on? They're a lot more expensive than fifteen dollars now. How much? Uh, well no, 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 no. What did, I said that the, if a regular vacuum cost fifteen bucks in those days, this was a yardstick. Gotcha. Yeah. Put it on. Put it on the thing there. Like this was like it came like in a when it came to my house in those days at toy stores. Uh, if you walked into like the James Bond dial, one of the coolest toys of the seventies was you got a briefcase. Yeah. Okay. This briefcase, Lee. Check this out. There was this briefcase as a child. Okay. That for like I don't I don't even know what it costs. I don't. That's why we get into prices. Briefcases for children. There was a briefcase. It's, it was a plastic briefcase. And yeah. You wanted to be a secret agent. Right. And it was based after James Bond. They couldn't say 007 on it. You ready, Lee? And on the suitcase, the cool thing about the suitcase is that mm-hmm. it had a button on the handle. Right. So you could press the button and a plastic bullet would come out and shoot no. you. Because in there was a gun with a silencer oh connected to this hinger. Mm. It was all, you know, for 10-year-olds and 12-year-olds. Yeah. Oh, for children. You want to be an asshole. Yeah. You know, oh, I you, thought this is something a no, business no, man so would I'd have. pick it up and go, and it would hit you in the chest and you go, motherfucker. Yeah. And you would have the same gun. I was a bank robber. But in there came like handcuffs, a rope. Like all secret agent shit, yeah. like a telescope, magnifying glass. Yeah. So mm. my point Some is, gum. When my mom showed me when this guy came over, mm-hmm. what what got was so cool about Kirby vacuum cleaners at the time was that it came in a fucking box, mm. and it can't see how all those utensils. Oh yeah. Like all those utensils That's right everything. there for the for yeah. the for the four twenty nine one. Yeah. That fucking vacuum had a beautiful case mm. that you opened up 
and all everything was neat, nice and neat. Yeah. So we had a Kirby vacuum growing up. Bro. And that was nice. It, it was, was nice. It your was classy. House, your house was always clean. Look, you had all the brushes, all the things for yeah. the furniture. See the belts? Who the fuck do you think you're dealing with? Do you think you got? Look do you think you belts. fucking guys are fucking dealing with? You see the little circle what belts? Do you think those are wristlets, dude? Those are fucking belts. Do you think, see what I'm saying? What the fuck? That's what happened. The Kirby vacuum should be getting a vig for all these assholes that wear these bracelets and put, you know, yeah. help the fucking homeless and uh, I think the it, sharks. Water it, for the blind and I, shit. I, I have water for the blind, bro. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know how to fix that. No, it's a listen. When the thing breaks, it's real fucking easy. I was just dumb. You take off the grill, bop. You take it off the loop. Okay. And then you rem you take the the old one or snap. Mm -hmm. It's like if I take a rubber band and cut it with a scissor, it just snaps. It's just one sh one rope. Then you take that and you loop it on something and you loop it back on the thing. You close the vacuum, and your thing is tip top with mm -hmm. glue. So I can't believe that they still didn't uh, take away their loop. Do you people think I'm over here dropping knowledge with no fucking knowledge? If I tell you about Kirby vacuum, it's because fucking it's the shit my, my doodle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what the fuck you think you're dealing Dude, with? Some I, re I remember appliances used to just be so much more hardy, bro. But the vacuum, you could ride on the fucking vacuum. Remember that? If you were a little kid, you could sit on there where your mom was pushing and ride on. Like It was like a piece of fucking metal. I love vacuuming. Yeah. Till this day, I vacuum at the house. I love it. There's something soothing about it. Something about vacuum. I don't like when it's too. Like my wife, she's part of the fucking technology world. So we got a vacuum. Take like most by itself? No. No. That thing's but, a piece of shit. But the fucking vacuum's got a thousand things. I'm scared to fucking touch it. Yeah. Then she's got a rug cleaner because the cats piss everywhere. Yeah. So we got to have a fucking rug cleaner constantly. And what? Bro, I help her clean the rugs. The, just people's feet. Just us walking around with sneakers. Can you imagine? Your house is filthy. It's filthy, Lee. If you don't mop like with hot, hot water every week. You know, we lay down on shit. We drag so much stuff. On. It's not us. It's not us. It's when we walk to our cars. It's all that shit that we step on. You walk in and out of your house every day. Like the other day I was looking at, you ever have a wall that to turn on the fucking light your finger always hits? Look yeah. at that. There's always your fingers in dirt. Gross. Even though you wash your hands. Boogers, whatever. Semen, no, skin. No, no, it's not like that on my walls. What's the matter? That's when I was 14. <laughs> Come on, dude. Remember you were 14? But I'm saying on your hand, when you touch the yeah. light fixture, think about a light fixture. Think about everybody's gross hand. Muffin pieces, a little pieces of muffin, you know, sugars, seam, definitely semen. People have fucking semen all over their house, dude, bro. Dude, I, I worked in a re in restaurants, so they make you go through, like, training for that stuff. Yeah. I've, if I'm ever somewhere and you need to get a soda lid, I never grab the one on top. I always go in. I never grab the first straw. Like I hate. Oh, that's I hate psychopath. places. That, there's places that have just loose straws, not even with plastic around them. I won't go there. That's anymore. why, I like Marie T, they got the paper old school. You yeah, you need the something. Fucking paper in the air. Yeah, but I don't I, like that, bro. I remember I was talking about this earlier. The can like when, when the Halloween when I was young. Came on the weekend. We didn't have... Me and ghetto boys are trick-or-treating. <laughs> robbing little kids for oh, bags. Dude, we had... They didn't even have individually wrapped candies. I remember this one house we went to, and their grandfather had died. They fucking... They, his grandfather died on Halloween. They left him out on the porch for the night, bro. <laughs> How fucking awesome is that, right? Knowing that he's dead anyway, right? But sometimes these houses would have... Did people think he was a decoration or something? Well, people thought he was just being scared and resting. But but this is when he died. And that's when he left the earth. It was on Halloween, right? But this is a time when you would get... I remember this one house, the candy was all junked in the bowl. Like, they they weren't all individually wrapped candies. You Fuck know what I'm that. saying? I remember going to a place they just put the whole mints in there. And they would all... And one person would just get the whole fucking rock of mint, you know? So you're running around with like 300 mints on the arm in one chunk, you know? She came home with some candy. We did two or three things. She came home with some candy, but I gotta tell you something. Like three or four people gave her little bottles of water. I, I can't wait till she gets old enough so she throws them back at the fucking people. <laughs> and go get your life together. Give her the fucking water. Water to a child. We want sugar. And I raided that thing the first night, Friday night when I got home. I got stoned by mistake. And I started eating my little licorices. And she had like three of them in there. I ate them the next Damn. day. She was pissed. Well, I mean, she knew, huh? Like, did, Fuck yeah. Do you, did you look through it? Like, when I, I, when I was go, growing yeah, up, no, my mom would look through and take any No, well, we didn't or, go to houses. First off, we went to the church. 
and we went to the school. Oh, gotcha. And they have a thing called trunk or treat. And people pull their cars up back there, people that are involved with the school and parents. So kids can't even go to the houses anymore? No. We're going to do that on Tuesday. Gotcha. Yeah. This is for little kids and whatever. What's going to happen is we hide her. She's, Tuesday, she's got, like, fucking swimming. You know, she don't get out of there till 5.30. We're going to bring her home. By the time we get home, in fact, I'm going to... going to be running late. Yeah, we'll be running late because... We're going to fucking bring her home for uh, to eat. And then somebody will ring the doorbell. And once the, the kids come, she's good. Last year, she just closed. She goes, Mommy, Daddy, bye. We had to run out after her last year. Wow. Because she just took off with the other fucking kids. Like, she was like, see you later. And we're like, what the fuck are you doing? There's candy out there to get. So we yeah. walked till it got dark. And she's like, Mom, Dad, let's get the fuck out of here. Last night, she told my wife, let's get out of here. And they went to trunk or treat at the church. My wife said, after a half hour, she came up to me. She goes, Mommy, let's go home. Mm. It's good to go. Yeah, at least she knows what's up. But yeah, they got, uh, they used to have. We went to houses. We knocked yeah. on people's doors. Mm. They gave you pennies, nickels. They gave you big pieces of chocolate and shit. Chunks of popcorn. Chunks of popcorn, fucking food. Sugar. One lady used to yeah. just no, would no. take a fucking two things of sugar and fucking just put and it just in, throw your, fucking them in bag. your fucking bag. Just scoops. Shit. No candy, These not even in shape. These parents today are fucking half of fags. Oh, dude. They give your kids dick. The reason why I asked you earlier if it bothered you is because when I was growing up, I had a dear, dear, dear friend that, I mean, Theo Vaughn, he was a sweetheart. Beautiful fucking young kid. And he had three sisters, all of them. Like, each one were beauty queens. God. One of, that, one of those families where yeah. you look at the, it was him and a brother and six sisters, but all of them, like even the 10-year-old, you're like, Jesus. He fucked the did, whole what, family. What did your parents do? Yeah. Every one of these girls, the, bang, yeah. like the second oldest one, went to dance. But this was the fucked up thing. She danced two blocks from my house. Mm. Like within weeks, it was out. And you know, you'd be at the fucking liquor store with him waiting for somebody to buy you booze. Mm-hmm. And somebody would come up to you and go, what are you guys doing? Tonight? Nothing. Let's go down there. Tina's dancing. Tina was his fucking sister. Yeah. You know what I would feel like? My heart would fucking stop. And there were nights that I heard that he actually went down there and pulled her out of there by her fucking hair and shit. Yeah. There was a couple of incidents with him. He was a good kid. I mean, look, I, I don't think I was ex- stoked about it, for sure. Right. You weren't jumping up and down and having a But look, I know the childhood that we had, you know? And I know I got very little connection like with any you know I didn't have any guidance or connection so I know she got even less than that you know she was you know the youngest kid in our family so and I didn't feel like I knew her well enough or had enough pull, you know emotional connection with her to she wasn't going to listen to me you know so and, and what am I going to you know like so all I could do was just be supportive you know Tell her to make sure she wore a seatbelt when she drove. Make sure she was, you know, walking with people in and out of these clubs. And also, my sister was a smart... She wasn't a fucking putz, you know? She was a smart girl. She still is a smart girl. I wonder what you can make as a fucking... She bought a house. I mean, she bought a beautiful yeah, house out in Arizona. That's like it. That's it. That's it. That's the proof of the pudding. Because if you're fucking smart, and then, then they get to be fucking slick. Like, when I lived in Seattle, my girlfriend was a fucking half a stripper. She had the mind of... I mean, she's as dumb as a box of rocks. Yeah. She's a millionaire today. Yeah. She ended up marrying a Hindu that was 80. He died. The whole fucking deal. The fucking dying nice guy, Hindu trick. Nice guy. You know, but... Uh, let me tell you something, man. And I'm mad enough to admit it. From fucking 95 to 97... That girl supported me. Yeah. She was making it bank. Yeah. And I couldn't go up to her and go, hey, how did you make this extra 200 today? It's none of my fucking business. Yeah. You know, it's none of my fucking business. But, I, you know, a lot of people make jokes about strippers, including me. I got the utmost respect for them because it's a deep game. Well, look, I mean, I... It's a deep fucking game, dog. Dude, I hooked up with a stripper in Shreveport that looked like a half of a... What is a minotaur or a centaur? What's one that have an animal for the half lower body? I think both of those. Yeah. I think a centaur. This girl looked like a centaur, you know? But she still seemed cool. She was, I swear to God, she had the strongest fucking, she had thighs for calves. She had thighs up top and then also double thighs, no calves, you know? Like just built like a damn fucking, 
you know, like a like a squirrel squatch, just like fucking short, thick fucking legs, you know, all stomach, hardly any legs or arms. Uh, but I'll tell you this, dude. I I notice, and here's what I notice. I find that comedians are often in. We fall in a lot of same circles as like porn stars, exotic dancers, because there's some similarities. There. Yeah, no, we're broken. That the similarities that somewhere we feel shortened somewhere along the yeah. line. You know? We need some type of immediate acceptance. Like if I sit here sometimes at night or not that here. But many nights I've sat there and said, why did I become a comedian? I mean, did I need attention when I was a kid? My mom was on my ass when I was a kid. Yeah, you but know? on your ass and, being lo- and, and, and making you feel loved are two different things. No, you know? but it was the same thing. It's not like I sat there and, uh, you know, fucking, no, 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 no. She yeah. was always, no. That's one thing. I, I lacked the love of a father. Right. You know, so maybe that sparked it. Go ahead, my brother. But, I mean, do you think that maybe... <laughs> She was loving for the first, I think, what, you were 13, 15? 15, 16. So maybe, maybe if she had had lived, you wouldn't have been a comedian. So maybe from the, the love that you lost. I always loved performing. When I was a kid, I was kind of a musician. Mm-hmm. And then as I got older, I did karate. But my specialty was the forms. And I was really good at doing forms and putting together stupid moves and shit. <laughs> and then I heard stand-up comedy. And I just thought it was fucking superb, and I, then I became whatever the fuck I ended up becoming. Yeah. And now we're here, you know. So somewhere I took different elements of that childhood, mm-hmm. and I became a stand-up comic. Do I drive a fancy car? Do I fucking jump up and down and jiggle for love at this point in my life? You know me a long time, bro. I got my own views. I live my own fucking life. I don't give a fuck about what you know directors and producers think before you came here you're a fucking man and you gotta leave here a fucking man yeah if you become what they want you to become those are the fucking people that that, they they should have never came here they never should have came here yeah those stories I told last night at the ice house on stage they're true stories I told the guy to go fuck himself on the set of this fucking Highline commercial Mm -hmm. like I shot this Arby's what is it again are you sure you want me to say it? No, what's the name of the company? Hardee's. Hardee's. Oh, I love Hardee's, bro. What's the name of the cousin to Hardee's? Uh, oh, Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. So yeah. years ago, bro, I shot three national commercials three weeks in a row. Like in my 20 years here. That's I, huge. I booked like 10 commercials. But in 2009 or 2000, one of those years, I booked a fucking three national sprint. Wow. Something else and this Arby's, which was fucking money. Yeah. Because they pay you from both companies, then they put the ads together. You have no fucking idea, Lee. Dude, I did a shitty internet commercial one time and made 25 grand over three years. Bro, how many people people stand in front of a cup with 7-Eleven? 25 grand over three years is a gift. Oh, it was... I could never... It's a gift. I couldn't imagine. I thought I was going to make $600. You know? I could never imagine that I would have made that much money over that time. Oh, yeah. And they give you a little... I told Lee for a year now, Lee, stop this shit. Go get your headshots. Go give that guy $200. Go to Aqua. Tell him you want to go out for commercials. Jesus Christ, Lee. I I would do put you in some shit. Hershey Kisses, snacks, or something. Anything that people are eating, jumping up and down, games with a jersey on. You're what to do, you know. You you're a zombo looking motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you could be the friend that's you're, sitting on the <laughs> pot of chips, bro. You're the a dip guard. motherfucker, dog. Guarding the condiments, dude, or fucking sitting there with some pussy on your leg. It's I the, love that. The, that the, sounds the, great. Come yeah. on, somebody told me. Yeah, they they somebody, said to me the condiments. somebody said to me that they stop going out for theatrical and they just focus on commercial. I was like, you know what? I think it's time for Uncle Joey to get a commercial agent again. Yeah, because I'm gonna book a mafia commercial once a year or cook. Or a chef, or a pizza guy, or a garbage man. Yeah. If you don't, if you're not in the game, you're never gonna book the game. Yeah. I signed with a chick, and a week later, I get paperwork that I gotta put my bank account information on there. And I go, "What do you need my bank account information for?" She goes, "Well, if we ever need to get that, 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 you gotta take that off the contract. Papa just gives you a name and a headshot." Go to work, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll worry about fucking bank information, and social security <laughs> numbers. Suck my dick. I gotta give you a credit report. Who the fuck are you? Let me see your credit report, bitch. (laughs) 
fucking people. The audacity. <laughs> these, you the audacity of these people. Where's Tony Bennett, cocksucker? They fucking people. Let me see your fucking credit report. Animals, bro. Let me see your fucking credit report. <laughs> Let me see you. <laughs> Fucking balls on people. I want to be around. Oh, he sounds good, huh? To pick up the pieces <laughs> when somebody <laughs> breaks your heart. I don't know why every time I fight, you think that candle's going to save you. <laughs> you use it like a shield of death. That candle can Bro, block like the whips out of my asshole. It's like Zelda. Have you had 15 like candles. <laughs> right. <laughs> My asshole would sink the whole candle but factory. You know? who <laughs> will swear this was chicken Florentine that my wife made for lunch. This song? To do. Oh, that food. Yeah, man, I've been eating some plants recently, so I haven't even been having any gas, man. To learn what? I farted the other day and forgot I hadn't farted in a long time. Dude, that's the number one thing I think I'm going to miss when I die, bro. Farting, probably. And looking at horses. I, th- I thought veggies made you fart all the time. Not me, man. You're clean. You're sober. You look good. You I'm an adult. You're going to shoot a special. What do you want to do? I think we're going to do it when we're so time. We'll see. If not, dog, listen. You see that album right there? That's, yeah. Uh, what's his name? He sold, he sold a bunch of those. And you know what, bro? You get yourself Lee. You throw Lee a couple dimes. We put together a little team. You take it to the Irvine Improv. We blow it up on a few podcasts. Do it at Ice House. And you do two shows. It doesn't matter. Material is material. And guess who owns the material? And who's got the money on fucking iTunes? Yeah. You do. And you monitor it. And you know what? This whole business is media anyway. How many people have free internet and how many people have showtime? Let's let's take a fucking vote. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if it's going to be showtime, you're going to sell yourself for showtime, fuck it. You know what? Let me go. Let me put a fucking album out. You put pictures in there. You lighten case ass all on fire. Yeah. You with your buddies at the comedy store will all come down and support you. Do it on the night when we're all in town. People would rather have that and a fucking CD. And guess what? You're the Captain Kirk of the Enterprise, and you run it. Because you know these people are going to listen to you at work and laugh their ass off. Yeah. More than they're going to tap into Showtime Go and all Yeah, I shit. agree. You're making them go to places they ain't there. And you know what? They love you to death, but ah, he went to Showtime. Fuck him. Yeah. I'll go to somebody who's on iTunes for $2.52, and I can listen to it at work and giggle. And what about the video? Could we also put the video on iTunes, you think, Lee? Yeah, absolutely. You can do whatever the fuck you want. With the video, I'd rather you control it. I'd rather you pay. Yeah, that's the, what I think. Well, pay, I, I, pay the G note, let them get the video, and then pay another number and let them get a a G note and uh, let them get the video and the behind the scenes with Lee and us and smoking reefer and you going home and showing your father's grave and you bowing and yeah. let's go show me the camp where your sister stripped the first time and, and low key. let's go see what they're doing today. That low ceiling, dude. They're, they're developing a bunch of surfer strippers. <laughs> oh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Da, na, 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 Batman, suck my dick, suck they're my They're all ass, doing that. What's that? Batman, that lick my you? pussy, lick my dick. <laughs> 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 Batman. <laughs> <laughs> what, were you, what were some of your Halloween costumes when you were young, dude? Dog, what Both the you fuck guys, is this? Jeopardy? Know. How the no, fuck I want to know? know, man. One of them was probably Batman. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't even have a fucking... A Boy Scout couldn't even be next to me because those, in those days, you were flammable as fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah. When I was a kid, people used to light on fire on Halloween. All the time. For no fucking <laughs> reason, though. <laughs> Boof. Yeah, yeah. You go to school on a Tuesday, and the next day they come in with bandages <laughs> yeah. and a jar full of Vaseline and no eyebrows. What happened to you? Were you lighting people on fire? No. Just a wild night, dude. Listen, if a car was driving, okay? People don't spontaneously combust. Oh, yes, they did by those suits. They Dude. were made by some material. Kerosene. I, they Dog, had- this shit was blowing up. So let's say you were walking with me, you, Theo. Mm-hmm. We got a couple idiots. We're 10. We're walking across the street with our little fucking. There's people who made costumes. Yeah. But then there were parents who bought them. They came in a box. And they came with a mask, mask. up on top of the fucking thing. the mask thing. would cut your fucking skin Yeah, open. the mask would cut your skin. It was like razor blades. It was for tough kids. Yeah. And then the suit, you were going to live. When your mom gave you that suit, she signed up for <laughs> Liberty National Insurance. <laughs> <laughs> because, let me say, let me put it to this way, Lee. You're crossing the street. You got the hand that goes like this, you know. Right. Right? But at that first light, there's a car. 
and by mistake, it's like a 1966 Chevelle. If it backfires, you're going up in flames, you know what I'm saying? Dude, they had some textiles going around our area that had kerosene. And I wish, Lee, I was lying. Kerosene in the cloth. Yeah, you were burnt. He will burn up every Christmas. You see a group of kids, one of them with like a flash suit, a Batman. You're like, that kid's not going to school tomorrow. Yeah. Somewhere along the line, those poor <laughs> bastards were fucking combust. Chevy Blazers would always do a fire off too at the end, you know. My uncle used to get out and <coughs> run back to the back of the car, and it would go off, and he would act like it shot him, you know, and he'd fall on the ground. Because a lot of those cars would backfire, and they had a lot of clothing back in our area. Somebody was making bad clothing that had kerosene in it, and kids were fucking getting uh, adults too. A lot of adult men we were smokers were getting fucking burnt up. Hilarious! I forgot all about those. Fucking uh, remember the take, boxes? I forgot about the you box. You forgot about the box. They, and they had all different sizes, all different colors. And they were called Take Your Chance Halloween. Make it a real Anything. Halloween. Mickey you know, Rooney. It's like I yeah. told Lee the other day. People want to get scared. Like, you want to be Halloween? Shove a dick in your ass and get a mirror in front of your face <laughs> and look at your reflection <laughs> of your mouth open. You'll be scared. Right? How is this company more, around for more than one year? Like, oh, if, if, if you said, like, they, they went to states where they endorsed fucking... Oh, uh, dude. They yeah. endorsed fucking, uh, what do you call those people? They uh, endorse flame- flammable people. Yeah. Uh-huh. They endorse jugglers, like, wizards. Yeah, like you took your. <laughs> dude, they had a girl in our neighborhood, dude. She would put that mask on and her head was so big, it would like smash her face into like a shape of like a cookie, right? <laughs> and it would take three days. Even after she took the mask off, oh. it would take like three days for her fucking face to go back to form, bro. I'm going to fucking pass she out. She looked like Mickey Rooney, dude. This girl oh, looked like fucking me. Mickey Rooney, oh my bro. My, I, I, I told you, when I was growing up, you were growing up. Every day you live for your, you, you struggle for your life, whether you were rich or not. Because those are the kids who bought those little half a fag suits mm-hmm. were those kids that had the flammable fucking Batman suits and shit. The kids that just put, like, I put a sheet on my head one year. And yeah. You know, whatever. Everybody's a fucking ghost. I'm a loser. <laughs> one year I was a garbage man. One year I was a fucking <laughs> abortion. You know, I'm a fucking stunad. But, yeah, you put a sheet over your head with a fucking hanger around your neck. Like a stunad. You know, like a fucking moron. Yeah, like an Italian nun. Yeah, so that that's what, you know. <laughs> yeah. So that was the fucking story. I dressed up. Or f- I, I probably got dressed up fucking four times in 54 fucking years. Yeah. I wasn't a big Halloween dude. That dressing up shit scares me. <laughs> yeah. This week scares the shit out of me. Really? Fucking Wednesday's Dia de los Muertos. Dude, I went Tuesdays, this weekend to Hollywood Saints Forever Day. Cemetery. Yeah, you people you, you people do it the white way. You go up there, you think somebody's going to come out with a boo mask on. I think I go deep into the voodoo world. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I go deep. I like candles. I put a cigar out. I'll probably put some Cuban food out for these fucking spirits this week and drive them crazy. I got some guineas on there. I got to take care of so I got to get a meatball for them from rails or something. <laughs> I got some Irish peep. I got to put a shot of whiskey out for yeah. them when you got the altar. You got to have the fucking, uh, the fucking altar for uh, your people who fucking kept you alive over the years. Dude, I a lot of... I, I got Balzano, Rago... Dominic Special, I got fucking, uh, Jesus, my mother, my father, my godmother, I got Zoraida, my stepfather, he could burn in hell. I don't give a fuck about oh, that. Oh, come on, thing. dude. Yeah, I don't toast him for dick anymore. I used to toast him. Get him a like, donut or something. You could just toast so many people, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got people dying left and right. I got Ralphie now. I got to get a picture of Ralphie and put like a fucking jalapeno popper. <laughs> Out of respect for that fucking <laughs> cocksucker left me here with these fucking Gentiles. Cow, cow. Oh, <laughs> I had a rough time cow, after cow. the other night's podcast because he showed up to the office the other night, Wednesday night. Yeah. We heard, the, we heard the horn go. Ba, 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 we, ba, we, ba. we were talking about him. Ba, 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 ba. We were talking about him. I go, you know who gave us that, Lee? That speaker, he gave it to me. Wow. Look how long ago it was. It was by that company that you get a magazine. Sharper Image. Sharper Image. Oh, I yeah, I got that yeah. in my house in a box. I didn't even know what the fuck it was. I go, honey, I got this in the mail. I don't even... She goes, Ralphie sent it to you. It's an iPad, iPod charger. I still got the... I'm so old school, I still got that iPod. <laughs> I brought that here because the speakers are sensational. And right as we were talking about it, you felt like a little breeze. And all of a sudden, I could feel, I could just remember him. He was just there three fucking weeks ago, four weeks ago, sitting there. And the fucking Mexican fruit guy came, and he goes, bop, 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 bop. And Ralphie always would go, ping a papaya, ping a papaya. 
For years, Ralphie's been saying that shit whenever you play that that. And horn. dude, yeah. first of all, everything he said is exactly how it went down, but also, we're here every night. That truck, that's, that sound is never here. That wow. sound is never it, it's, here. It's always, it's, it's, it, we he came by to say goodbye. That's reality, guys. Yeah. They stick around for 30 days. They just don't go into fucking the next image. They want to see your friends one last time and touch it. And listen, bro, I had a friend, Jimmy Burkle, that I loved. And I'll never forget getting a call from him on that Friday. He was in the hospital already. And he's like, Cokes, what's happening? And I could tell in his voice he was done. He had fought, he would wrestle with cancer mm. for two years. Mm. And I'll never forget getting a call that Sunday saying he died Sunday morning and fucking he was saying goodbye, man. When Carmine Balzano died, I missed his call. When I called him back, he was dead. Wow. A day later, Frankie called. He goes, yeah, your phone. You just called him. He must have just gone to the bathroom, got up and died of a heart attack. Damn. They call you to say goodbye. Everybody says goodbye, believe it or not. They all say goodbye in their own way. And if you talk to people who've had somebody die recently, mm -hmm. give them 30 days. They give you a signal before they leave just to let you know that they got your back. It's the weirdest thing about life. Mm. Yeah, I believe that, man. They'll give you, and I know it sounds crazy. I'm talking about flat so. earth and whatever. I'm talking about the spiritual world. I was raised in it, so I get it. I believe that my dad opened up a lot of doors for me and closed a lot of doors. I was there a lot of nights, man, when I had a lot of choices to run. And I always made the right choice. If not, I wouldn't be in this fucking chair. Something makes you make the right choice. Yeah. Something. Something, everything in life sometimes you ever, you ever watch that voice, the, the movie The Shining? Yeah. The Shining when Scatman Brothers talks to a little boy and he explains to him that everybody hears that voice. Mm -hmm. That's called the, you don't remember that? I don't remember that part. I got to go watch it again. I only seen it one time because I put saved a lot of movies. Put on The Shining, Scatman Brothers talks to a little boy. Yeah. And you'll see, you got 15 minutes. We got to get you out of here. So we'll end you with a bang. You traveling? Play it. What am I doing? Me, in my mm. world, brother, you're going to be one of the next fucking top fucking comics in this country. And I tell you this as your older brother. And I got no jealousy. I, I wish you all, you stay on the right track. Tell your agent to push you out for more movies and TV. Yeah. Stop fucking around. If you want to be a host, go somewhere else. Go to Germany and host Nazi videos and make real money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate it, it man you always are so supportive so your man. fucking agent inspire me sending you out to acting to build your little acting resume yeah you're gonna stay on the road till you're 90 so you might as well take a gamble you're gonna look at the paycheck from the acting and go why am I doing this Uncle Joey because they might like you and they might use you six times this winter and it's not a lot of money but now you're building credibility and next year NBC thinks, thinks of you for this new fireman show they're looking for a handsome guy from the south and bang there you go old Jed's a millionaire so now what do you shoot 10 episodes are you going to get rich not really but you got comedy in your building and you got your podcast and you got Twitter you're very funny you know it all comes at you. Yeah. I know you're on the road killing. I hear people fucking love you. You know what I'm saying? Staying busy, man. You got to figure We gotta figure out how to get them in on Thursday night to suck your little nutsack. That's what I'm saying, bro, because I'm bringing my nutsack. I see you at the school. I see you at the store. Here, put that on the yeah, top. First one. One. You never saw this, did you, Lee? Uh, yeah, I did. No, you didn't, cocksucker. I did. I did. I did. I did. How come you don't tell your girlfriend to watch this here. scary shit? Is that Arsenio? It is. It is, Lee. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's with his haircut. Do you know how I knew your name was Doc? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I can remember when I was a little boy. My grandmother and I could hold conversations entirely without ever opening our mouths. She called it shiny. Mm. And for a long time, I thought it was just the two of us that had the shine to us. Just like you probably thought you was the only one. But there are other folks, though mostly they don't know it or don't believe it. Oh, this white kid doesn't trust him, huh? 
No, he knows what the fuck he's saying because nobody talks to him like that. Done? Why don't you want to talk about it? I'm not supposed to. Who said you ain't supposed to? Tony. Hmm. Who's Tony? Tony is a little boy who was my mom. Damn. Nope. Nope. Is Tony the one that Damn. tells you things? Yes. How does he tell you things? It's like I go to sleep and he shows me things. But when I wake up, I can't remember everything. Hmm. What's the matter, Lee? Turn it off. Lee's getting nervous. Yeah, Listen, when you were a kid, everybody has an imaginary friend. No, no. That friend is an ancestor talking to you. You're talking to your ancestor. You never even know it. Yeah. You don't even need to go on Ancestry.com. You had a spit. And as you grow up, you build that's your confidence, man. Yeah. It's kind of weird. It's a weird fucking thing because I see it now with Mercy. When I talk to her, she's four and fucking. She's going to be five in two months. And. You see uh, the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? What's the matter, Lee? You don't like those type of movies? No, I don't like those kind of type of movies. It makes you nervous? Yeah, well, well, they play that fucking music to make you nervous. Yeah. And then it's uh, talking about fucking craziness. Yeah, I don't like that at all. But even back then, race relations wasn't that good, even if you watch that fucking video. You know what I'm that's saying? That's a great fucking movie. And that movie, that's a real movie because it scares the fuck out of you without scaring the fuck out of you. Yeah. That's a, that's a real director right there. That's a film that, you know, they'll watch generations in film school and go, yeah. how did he scare you without scaring you? He doesn't fuck with you till the end. Who's the director of that? I think it's got to be no. Stephen yeah. King. Stephen King. Yeah, he's, he's the master no, of disaster. Stephen King is the writer. Whatever um, the fuck. You know what I'm saying, Stanley cocksucker? Cooper? Could it have been Kubrick? That I don't know. could have been one of those crazy motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where are you going to be New Year's Eve? Me? Nowhere, man. You still open? I got one set. Yeah, I got one. <coughs> I'm going to be in Huntsville, Alabama in November 16th, 18th, and 19th. And you fly into fucking that's it. You have to fly into Nashville? I don't know yet. You have to fucking look. I think you have to fly into Nashville and connect. And get a rental car. I heard that. Yeah, that's right. If you have to get a rental car, I don't know if I'm going to Huntsville. I might just get one. I got family down there, so. Yeah, I don't like driving those fucking distances when I don't know where the fuck I'm going. Yeah, it's probably about a three-hour drive, I'm guessing, from one of the big airports. Yeah, that's fucked up. So, right, they better get so an airport we'll and shit. You know, I but, just landed uh, in fucking Lexington. They got an airport. <laughs> oh, I like Lexington. I, I love Lexington. That club's great, but they still got the leak in the ceiling over the there now. The club is great. The food is great <laughs> yeah, next door to it. The fucking town is beautiful, yeah. man. It's yeah. a cool town. People think it's not, man. No, man. It's diverse. It's, it's cool. It's hip. This man. Me and my wife been thinking about a lot of things. and that's. I love it. You get you some horses out there. I like the fucking South, man. I still want to raise my daughter in some place where it's fucking normal. What yeah, mental state is Nashville's good, man. I mean, I think Ralphie was on to something with Nashville. Nashville's no, know, a beautiful I place. I know Ralphie was definitely on to something. A million dollars, you get your beautiful place out there. And you're in and out of there. A yeah. Million, a million dollars. For a million dollars out there, that comes with two butlers. One of them is naked. Yeah. <laughs> One of them rubs you down, sticks a finger in your ass, wipes mm. your ass. You got a bell in your bathroom. Can yeah. you imagine having a bell in your bathroom and somebody comes in without a fucking mask on? <laughs> and just wipes your face like a soldier with a smile on their face. They just Without a fucking mask on. <laughs> have you seen have you seen the the the, the YouTube video of Lee in Outer Space? Have you seen it yet? Uh, uh, uh. Lee, put it on for your boy just so you can take a look at this thing. <laughs> this is, when he first saw it, he said, There goes my job career. Well, yeah, well, I have my whole full name in it. I'm going to get some. <laughs> who yeah, gives but a I don't need What do you mean, who gives a fuck? Go by the muscle yeah, listen, hamster, bro. Listen, you're 29. Snoop Dogg became a legend from smoking. Snoop Dogg never had a video like Dude. this come out. Yes, he did. This is, this is. Bro, you're the fucking human pectoral, bro. You are one of the funniest dudes around me. Yeah, I group, fucking right? listen. Yeah, you Lee, are, Lee. You're an angel, bro. I picked you from the fucking choir. From right? the depths, bro. Because I knew it. I looked at you, and I knew you were shy, the whole fucking deal. 
And I know you just needed somebody to push you over the cliff. And you're changing. You're growing up. I give some shout outs right here to my buddy. Matt, hold on. My brother, Matt Holmeyer, having a hard time over there putting the pieces together. Dennis Hyde, my little brother and nephew, Bob Lalingas, Nikki Campus Life, Mickey Chaps, Holla Z Alex, Nikki Shades, Fat Chris Blowchair, and Kaylee. You know, I love you motherfuckers. Don't forget the Funny Bone Omaha, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And don't forget I told you this one. Don't forget I told you Gotham. Four shows, me and Dean Del Rey, mm. Friday the 10th and Saturday the 11th. Don't fuck around. Anyway, you got any dates to promote, my brother? I got it. Drop one on me. Drop one on these people. This is the church. I got it, baby. They want to see you, baby boy. Let's do this shit. Coming this to shit. confess, baby. I got November 16th uh, through the 19th at Stand Up Live in Huntsville, Alabama. There you go, right there. Come on and support this savage. Let him know you're part of the church. Don't dose him. He's family. Yeah, keep it low. And I'm in Calgary, if got, if December got, 1st. If you got an AA book, give it to him. Go ahead, underline the evils. What else? Hit me where it hurts. And then you're in and, Calgary. Uh, and I'm in Calgary December 1st, and I got um, and I got my podcast this past weekend that you can check out um, when you're done checking out Joey. For you comics that are struggling with any addiction, think about this young man. Hit he me stopped. up. He, he took over. He banged the fucking stripper in a cab, and he changed his life. He went to church. He met a friend. They went together. And look at him, 18 months, he looks good, he's still funny. Feeling a lot of people good. think if I, if I stop getting drunk, my friends won't like me at the open mic. Then you need new fucking friends. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is it right here. And then, Be yourself. And, and he did it in the major leagues. If you're in the minor leagues and you're having a hard time, just think of fucking this fucking savage. He did it and stuck to it. This is a handsome guy. If I looked like him, I'd be having threesomes every night. Oh, man. One eight ball. Every hour on the hour from <laughs> ten to twelve. Oh, dude. Drop it off in the fucking mail slot. You know what I'm saying? I beat my own asshole. Hold on for lunch. to the dog. I don't want to meet the eight ball. <laughs> It'd be that type of party. What else, dog? Anything else you want to drop? Not much, these, man. Bro? I Put just this love on. you. Watch look at Lee's. I love you look and I appreciate you. I got a scoot too. Look at this fucking beauty right here. Look at this. Animal. Look at this Ali Molly. Eighty nine? No. Eighty nine? And look at the guy playing the air drums, and Lee just panics. Look at him. <laughs> That's Lee panicking right there. No, no, not yet. Uh, not he yet. can't handle it. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. He's moving around. He's fidgeting. He's <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Lee's out. <laughs> He takes a breath of fresh air. He oh, he bumped him. <laughs> he bumped him. Oh, Lee, man. Look at poor Lee again. <laughs> <laughs> now he's coming to kind of. He looks, he oh, looks yeah, at the eye. <laughs> Lee's fucking Buzz Aldrin out there, brother. Oh, you made my day, Lee. Every time I oh, see you, you make my day, Lee. Look at Pleo. Oh my God! <laughs> we tore Miss Lisa. <laughs> I gotta go. I, gotta I love you with all my store. heart, my brother. Love you too, man. You know the gate, how to get out, right? Yeah. The thank you for everything, thing. Lee. Thank you so much, man. Love you, buddy. Love you too, man. You got it. You're doing a good job. You know I love you, motherfucker. Hold on. Yeah, you're gonna run out of here. Yeah, yeah actually, ten fifteen. I realized I did. No, 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 bro. Go do your thing. Send them my love. Shit. Thank you for coming by. You know I love you. Same here, bro. You're doing your fucking thing. Well, look, I appreciate the support. If you ever need anything from me, I'm here for you. Come on, dog. You know your fucking family here. This is how we do it on the fucking church on a beautiful Monday. This is how you start off a fucking Monday, people. You people are going to wake up today. You were feeling hoop doop de doop I had a long weekend. I took my kid. Listen, it's fucking hard work. We all know what we signed up for. I'm working more hard. I'm working harder at 54 than when I leave the door open than when I was a fucking burglar. You know what I'm saying? When I was a burglar, life was fucking easy. Now I got to get up every morning and really steal with three fucking hands. So, like I said before, think of the, uh, this poor bastard. He used to be out seven nights a week in the Hollywood game. Look at him. He's sober. He looks fucking great. He's always got a story for you. And that's the way we fucking do it here in the church. What's happening now? Before you get out of here, let me read you something real quick. Let me tell you about a little something, and then we'll get you the fuck out of here. Tip top, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold you up. There's a bunch of podcasts you want to listen to. Who the fuck am I? Who the fuck am I? Anyway, 
Like I told you in the beginning of the fucking show, all right? There's not a lot of things I like and I believe in. Lee was on it. I was on it. You know, Lee really stuck to it for a long time. I mean, he still, I think he just got another shipment of Blue I have Apron. another shipment coming, and my dad does it every week. The dad still lives on it. You're single. You don't want to shop. You listen, four days a week. You go on Blue Apron three days a week. It comes to your house, right to your door. You pull it in. You take it out of the box. In there comes all the all the stuff you need to make the recipe. They give you a card with how to do it. And each meal, come on, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, you take a shower and bam, your meal is settled, you're ready to go. That's what Blue Apron's all about. Because you choose from a variety of new recipes each week. Or you let Blue Apron's culinary team surprise you. Recipes are not repeated within a year. So you'll never, ever, ever get bored. You customize your recipes each week based on your preferences. So Blue Apron has several delivery options so you can choose what fits your needs. And there's no weekly commitment. So you only get deliveries when you want them. Each meal, listen, comes with a step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card, proportioned ingredients, and can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. Do you hear that? 40 minutes or less. Blue Apron's freshness guarantee promises that every ingredient in your delivery arrives ready to cook or they'll make it right. Check out this month's menu. They got sweet pepper chicken with bok choy and rice. Do you know how to make bok choy? No, you don't. This is your opportunity to learn. You ready for this one? Black bean and cheese tortas. Jesus. With roasted broccoli and lime sour cream. You know how to make that? No, you don't. How about, how about listen to shrimp and pesto fettuccine with spinach. There's a 30-minute meal. And a customer's favorite, seared chicken, roasted fall vegetables with caper butter, pan sauce. There you're sitting there. What am I going to have for dinner? Blue Apron. That's what you're going to have for dinner. Here's what I'm going to do for you with savages. Why do you think you hang out with Uncle Joey? Because I'm some some mook from the other side. No, because I'm hooking you up, savage, okay? Check, I told you, check out this week's menu, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you $30 off your first meal, and that kind of come to your house, free shipping. Did I tell you that already? Free shipping. You go to blueapron.com slash Joey. Check out the menu. You're going to love how good it tastes. You're going to love how good it feels. And you're going to love to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. Right now, you, you want to save money? Blueapron.com slash Joey. It's a better way to cook. Blueapron.com. You're going you're gonna to tweet me and go, Joey, I'm living like a doctor over here. Number two, listen. Thanksgiving's coming. You've been single for a long time. You don't smell. You got a nice job. You got a little bit of credit. You know. You owe your father 2000 but who cares? You know, you're waiting for him to punch the ticket anyway. You want to look good. You want to feel comfortable. That's really how come you got to have me undies. Me undies makes feel good undies your butt will be proud to wear. They'll be the most comfortable pair of underwear you'll ever own. And to check it out yourself, go to meundies.com slash jo- 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 Joey with tons of styles and patterns from camouflages to, to polka dots. You choose from both men and women. MeUndies will have the perfect fit for you or your personality. You follow me? The MeUndies feeling is unmatched because they're naturally soft fabric that is three times softer than cotton. Now, (coughs) for a limited time only, check out MeUndies first ever glow-in-the-dark print. Joey, what are you talking about? Glow-in-the-dark print. Joey, you must be kidding me. Glow-in-the-dark print. Lights out. Why not update your underwear drawer and glow at the same time? Can you imagine? You meet a girl in your dreams. You meet her on that tender stuff. You come out of the bathroom. You got glow on the dark underwear. It's dark with a candle on. Who Who's talking about Halloween here? Me undies. That who? And if underwear isn't your thing, me undies always makes the softest socks in the world. Listen, like I told you for years, I've been using me undies. Especially when I go to jiu-jitsu, especially when I have short time. Why? Because it's hot out and you want to have laminkia nice and soft. Correct the mundo? Correct the mundo. So what happens is you don't have no moisture down there. You know, you don't smell like a billy goat. It draws away from everybody and everybody's happy. Go to MeUndies. Give them a try. What I'm going to do for you is this. 
I'm going to get you 20% off the best and softest underwear and socks you'll ever own. Free shipping and 100% satisfaction guaranteed from your Uncle Joey. It's the holidays, bitches. Go to MeUndies.com slash Joey right now. That's MeUndies.com. 20% off the best and softest underwear and socks you'll ever own. Free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash Joey. Stay black. Thank you very much to my main man, Theo Vaughn, who had to do a spot at the comedy store. But thank you very much for you savages. We'll be back Tuesday or Wednesday. I haven't made up my mind. But if I don't talk to you, happy Halloween, you bad motherfuckers. And I want to thank my main man, the main Christ killer of life, my little brother, Lee Syatt, for always showing up and dropping knowledge Love you, buddy. on his Uncle Joey. And that's it, and that's that. I want to thank Blue Apron one more time. I want to thank MeUndies. I want to thank you motherfuckers for listening. I'm going to drop a little something on you from Willie Cologne, Hector Laveau, uh, off the album, uh, not Cape... Whatever. It crime pays. Blast this motherfucker, Lee. I love you, cocksuckers. See you guys in Omaha, Nebraska, or the following week at Gotham.